Hello everyone, it's Adam here. In today's video, we are going to be installing the Altrider R1250 GS Adventure Crash Bars. So the Adventure model comes with the OEM Crash Bars installed. They're pretty good, actually. Uh, they hug the cylinder heads great. They're fine Crash Bars. Um, they're gonna work for the couple of times in the bike's life that you're gonna lay it over at low speed. And there are products from some companies that are like reinforcement bars where you can hook into here and have a bar that runs to there. They kind of hold them up a little bit more. There are also some products that cover this opening here. Again, there's things you can do to like improve the quality or sorry, the droppability of this bike. This bike's heavy. I mean, it's, it's at least 600 pounds without you on it. And as soon as you start throwing throw accessories on there, you're going to quickly reach the 700, 800 pound. I think my, uh, my R1200 GSA fully fueled with everything on it uh, and empty boxes was um, 670 pounds. So, you know, big bike, big bike. And uh, it's all that weight crashing down. You're going to deform these crash bars pretty quickly if you're doing any hard off-roading. Uh, I do recommend Altrider's Crash Bar Reinforcement Kit. It's much cheaper than buying the full Crash Bars, but their Crash Bars are amazing. Just so good. So uh, let's start off here. Uh, how are we going to get started? Well, let me show you a couple of lay of the land items here. You have um, the uppers are going to stay in place for this. Altrider does not make upper Crash Bars for the adventure. So you're going to be unhooking uh, these two bolts here and taking that little piece out of the middle once you drop the OEM Crash Bars down. You're also going to have a clip for the auxiliary light cable right behind here. And you'll need to get a pick in there to open that up and remove the cable from there. You have a T50 right there that's holding the OEM crash bars in. You have another T50 right here. And then you have your final T50 right here in front of the kickstand bolt. And so you've got three bolts holding these lowers on, and that's the same on both sides. So I'm going to remove those. And then I'm going to get back to you. Quick correction, the bolt under here is actually a T40. And I would say the torque value of that was questionable. I barely had any teeth on it and it just unscrewed. So I'm not expecting the other side to be that easy. So be careful. You'll have to push this coolant hose up a little bit to get up in there to get a good hold on that. Slight correction, there are two uh, pick, sorry, well, two pickable um cable ties for that auxiliary light there. So now we have the this um, cylinder head completely naked. And we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step by just, just taking the beauty there of a, of a naked lower GSA. All right, on to the next step. Since I'm doing the skid plate crash bar combo of the Altrider, I'm actually gonna go ahead and remove this second T50. Uh, do this one side at a time. When you remove these from both sides, the engine will sink. So you don't want that to happen. <laughs> it's happened to me before and you have to kind of jack the bike back up in order to get that full alignment there with those holes. Just save yourself the time and do this one side at a time. In fact, a little pro tip with these brackets, you can go ahead and thread in the bracket just enough to get that uh, engine bolt uh, encapsulated again there before you pull this all the way out. So it's kind of a nice way to get this started without removing both at the same time. Okay, that's done. I'm gonna go into the other side. Okay, opposite side of the bike. We're gonna, uh, same thing as before, two T50s. T50, T40 is up there, right there. And then uh, don't forget those two uh, clips holding in the auxiliary light wire. Yank that, oh, and also the T40, it's right here in the front of the upper crash bar mount. Remove that, drop that down, then we're gonna install the other um, skid plate holder and yeah, move on with our installation. Now, continuing on with these crash bars, we have these uh, brackets mounted on both sides of the bike. Now we're gonna focus our attentions on this uh, engine cross bolt. This is a 18 millimeter socket on one side and a T55 on the other. You're removing this bolt completely and you're replacing it with this one right here. And so you just, I would recommend, you don't have to, I recommend having a friend uh, holding the uh, one of these sides captive with their arms um, while you or vice versa uh, unscrew the um, it. 
Now, uh, since I'm by myself, what I'll say that I've done in the past is I've gotten both sides linked up. So a 3 8 or a quarter inch driver on both sides with the 18 mil and the T55. And then, and then, sorry, I was killing a bug. And then basically lean over the bike and unscrew it that way. It takes a little bit of work, but it, it's doable. Um, let's get started. Like I said, it's kind of a pain in the butt <laughs> to hold one side by yourself and one side by yourself. So just, you know, take your time, make sure you got those teeth in there and um, good luck. But unlike me, you should go make some friends and then go do this uh, modification. I don't need friends, I have a helper, which is this three foot long breaker bar <laughs> propped up against the pillion peg. So be like me, don't make friends, get better tools. For the record, that is no fun. Just thought I would, I would share that. Uh, no fun. This bolt is scorching hot right now, uh, or this nut. Um, yeah, that is that is that is the no fun police right there. But uh, yeah, and look at all that thread locker that we took off of it too. Just, just ugh. <sighs> Don't breathe that. All right, cross bolt is done. Got that through. Now we're gonna grab the cross bolt that Outrider gave us. Um, we're gonna reuse that that nut that came on it. Three applying thread locker, of course. We're gonna grab our right side uh, crash bar and we're gonna bring it through this hole with this nut attached and one of these nylon washers. Uh, these do not include these in the 1200 series, but what this is doing obviously is it just goes right there and just keeps a little bit of from the frame to rub uh, around there and cause premature rust. I don't know if they ever, I never had a problem with it, but maybe people did. So now they include a little nylon thing here to go between the, um, the painted or the powder coated crash bar and the uh, the painted frame. Okay, so what we've done, we've applied some thread locker to that bolt, put the nylon washer behind it, hung this from here, and now we're gonna go to the other side and hang the other crash bar on the left, well, right side of the bike. Uh, this new bolt from Altrider is a 15 mil right here. And so we'll do the same methods, but we're 15 on one side, I think it was 18 on the other side, which is the OEM uh, nut, and we will tighten this down all right, we're through. So you can see now how it's starting to kind of shape up. Obviously this needs to um, move around a little bit more, but um, this is not tightened down yet. There's thread locker on it, but we're kind of against the race against time because about 12, 24 hours later, that's gonna cure. And so let's go ahead and get the rest of this uh, buttoned up here. But you can see everything is almost lined up where it needs to be. So that's right there. This is almost where it needs to be there. And so get things kind of where they should be. And then we're gonna get a bunch of nuts and we're gonna walk through the next steps. Keeping in mind this video is assuming you're not doing the Outrider skid plate. This is just the crash bars. Here are your bolts. These two on the right hand side, these go on your lower bra bracket flange that comes off of the engine frame. This one, larger one that's dead center, this will be your lower mount right here, the left bottom side of the engine. And this longer bolt on the left hand side is gonna be your mount that is up here at the top of the motor, right? Well, if we can see it, there it is, right there, at the very top of the crash bar. So get those all in, thread lock them, don't tighten them down yet, and we will be done with this installation. I decided to just go ahead and finish the install. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I will review with you all what happens next. Um, here's what I will say is, um, you know, take your time, don't stress out about it. Uh, certainly follow the instructions that indicate to keep, is that still, uh, is that not, or like, I guess it's fine. So they indicate to keep everything loose, including these bolts right here up top. Uh, keep everything loose. Don't tighten anything down. The crossbar, the bars going through the center stand, anything that on this thing, just leave them all loose till you get done because you won't be able to marry anything up if you have any bolts that are tightened down. Trust me, I tried to hack my way through it and it's failed miserably. So uh, as I just left you guys, everything else is right there. So you've got those two bolts going into the flange. You've got the one here going on the side, and then you have the another one going up top. Uh, it's gonna be basically a combination of, right up there, a combination of a five mil hex, a six mil hex, and an eight mil hex, as, long as, a, as well as a 13 mil um, socket wrench. 
Um, and of course, thread locker on everything. They won't use, use thread locker on all the bolts. Let's go to the other side. I'll give you a, just to make sure that we're all on the same page here on what happens after that. So yeah, same thing. These bolts over here, they're tightened down. And then on the front, tightened down there. The clearances are, so here's the intolerances on this, this thing are insane. In fact, I'm thinking to myself, like I never ever want to have to um, remove and reinstall uh, this skid plate um, crash bar combo ever again. <laughs> uh, we still have one more step to do, which is going to be to marry up the lower crash bar and the uppers, which is gonna require um, um, these here and these here. So a couple more things we gotta do. I'll get ready for that and then we'll cut over. I will say that like, I feel like they could have done a bit more. Well, you know, let, let me let me get my my let me sit down here for a second. One of the biggest criticisms that Alt Rider has had in the past is that they're undeniably the strongest crash bars you can get for the GS platform. Undeniably, that comes with the caveat. Everyone says, "Well, I'd rather bend a crash bar than bend a frame, or or pull out a bolt that screws into the motor, like this one down here." And yeah, I, I, I get that. Um, and I think Altrider listened. Now I am like, hey, things look a little weaker on the flanges because <laughs> I don't want to be two, 3,000 miles from home with a busted crash bar. But they took some, I think they, they took some decisions that um, we'll see. All I can say is we'll see. So as you can see here, like you have a little bit more distance between uh, where the crash bar welds to this piece that is bolted into the motor. So that piece will probably bend uh, before it actually snaps that bolt off. Same thing up here. See how far away that flange is welded from the bolt there? It's so far away that like when a direct impact happens to the side here, it is gonna bend that flange a little bit. Now all Rider has a crash, kind of a crash guarantee and they will send you it. They've done it before for me. They've sent me whole sides that I've, that I've bent up. Um, They've also sent me, um, the previous version of the 1200, they've sent me new connectors. Uh, that's basically this, this silver flange here. Also, same thing, bent. Uh, not this one, but the one on my old bike. Send me new ones of those. And so what they have now here is like all that impact is gonna be going, I suppose, into the frame or the motor. It's all gonna be going in here and bending around this corner right here. And so this will bend right there, but it won't do damage to the frame. Same thing for up top here. Uh, you have a much larger frame flange. This crash bar goes back a little bit more than the last one from the motor. And then you have the flange that's actually machine bent away from the frame. So it has a little bit of play to it before it even makes contact with the frame. And these are all changes that, um, you know, to be determined. It, it, it actually looks like it actually like is a little bit bigger, both farther out and more uh, shape. Let's actually just go over to the 1200. Why am I talking about this? Let's, let me show you what I'm talking about. And it's, it's important to go cylinder to cylinder. You don't want to go, um, they are, because cylinders are a little bit offset. So look at the flange here. You can see how how it's uh, straight line, not bent, and it's closer to the frame. You see down here, um, this is closer to the motor. This is what bent on me before. And this goes all the way down to there. So you can see how as opposed to the, the, uh, the crash bar linkage on the front going in front of the header, and mirroring up here, it actually goes behind it to there. And then up top, you can see that flange is not as long. It's long, but not as long as the one on the current one. So you've got a lot more impact going into that frame uh, mounting. And if you look at its tolerances off the bike, um, it definitely pushes the limit on gap on all sides. And so, you know, I, I just feel like it's a bigger, it's a bigger tube. It sits differently, it's designed differently. Is it better? We'll see. Um, I like it. I think the one thing that for me, when I'm doing like a full lock, slow speed turns, I put my left knee all the way forward and I'm already hitting those, uh, those cylinder heads, uh, the crash bars on my old GS. On this one, it's a little bit further back. So we'll see if I bang my, my shin up uh, when I'm doing turns, that's user error, not really their problem. So I'm, I'm excited, but I'm also a little skeptical.
And that's not a dig on Alt-Rider. It's just um, change is always like, hmm, change. Are we, are we ready for this? <laughs> uh, all right, so thanks for watching, everyone. I think this is pretty much, oh, sorry. Jeez, so stupid. <laughs> Let's now pause. I'm gonna get my things together and we're gonna do the, um, the install of those um, brackets that marry the top upper crash bar to the lower on the GS Adventure. I do wanna add one more note about these crash bars, though. Um, a lot of people intentionally pick the Alt-Rider crash bars because you can do valve checks uh, without having to uh, pull the crash bars. I don't know. So here's the tolerance between the X head on the right side and, um, and the crash bars. It's really tight. I'm not sure if I'll be able to actually remove the X head um, with the crash bars installed. So we'll have to get to that whenever we get to it. But on the other side, it's fine. The left side, it's fine. But on the right side, that is really tight. It's only at every 12,000 mile problem, but it is, it is a problem. <laughs> oh, well. Okay, last part of the crash bar install. We are gonna marry the OEM GSA uppers to the Alt-Rider lowers. I would love to powder coat these black right now, but we just don't have um, the budget or the time to do so maybe next year or later in this year. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab, first we're gonna grab the bracket that actually connects, um, that just sits on the lower crash bars. You'll see here you have the Alt-Rider logo up top. And then the nuts are going to sit on this in this little um, upper bit here. The bolts go through the bottom. It's a uh, five mil hex, and so um, you've got these bolts that it came with. And we're just going to get that threaded in, and I'll go from there. All right, we're going to tighten this down now. We're going to have the the flat surface facing up. You're still going to have this uh, loose auxiliary light cable for now. Uh, what we're going to be doing is basically tighten this up enough, but not too much, so we can get this mounted on top and slid into there. Then we're gonna be taking uh, this very stubby six mil nut and put it into this hole um, and thread it into that hole in the center. From there, we can tighten everything down and uh, use thread locker on um, this nut and the OEM nut that will go into um, this hole right here. Uh, but because these are locking nuts, we don't need to use thread locker on those. So as you can see, we have this completely straight. This is down, that's in there. Nothing is tightened down yet. However, the good thing is with this being mounted almost like rear biased, you have full access to this five mil in the front and then you can give it a couple of turns and it will uh, cinch down. On the rear, you'll notice that I'm not completely cinched down on the rear because we don't have to be. Uh, you're, you're about an you know, eighth or a sixteenth of an inch away from being cinched on the rear. But as soon as you turn this a couple of times with this being right where you want it in position with a five mil, uh, it's going to be completely tight. I'm gonna bring that as far back as I can because I actually want this to be clearing that there. If I put it too far forward, it'll be rubbing against this plastic here. Um, so make sure that's high and tight get that where you want it to be, then you can tighten this T40 back down and then get everything tightened up down there. Now you can tighten down this T40 on the upper crash bar. You'll notice there's a little hole right there. That's you can slip a zip tie through and go ahead and connect that auxiliary light wire right in there. And then from there, you can run zip ties back here to run it along here and keep it off of the engine. So, you know, two on the lower crash bar should be good enough. Okay. We got it. So here's this side. You can see there how everything married up. Very tight all the way around. If to do the zip tie work. But on the other side, same thing. You've got nice clearance on the fairing bits there, leading straight down to this spot right here. And it's very, very tight. Again, got to maintain the auxiliary cables, but looks great. And uh, you've completed the crash bar install. Unlike me, I suggest whatever you order, red, blue, anthracite, black, or silver, that you get your uppers uh, matching. That would be my advice. Or maybe wait a year and make those blue and make these blue. We'll see. But for now, protection is what matters, and it is very, very well protected. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Have a good day. All right, safe.